so we have crossed over the Red Sea. What a deliverance! For three days without water, what is God up to? We're thirsty. Welcome to Under the Tree. Often, when we come to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, or when we experience a great deliverance, we exult, we praise, we jump for joy, we give testimonies of God's goodness and grace. We sometimes suddenly find ourselves in great difficulty after. Sometimes we are led into a situation that tests our mettle, like when Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested. Or the enemy himself will come to test you to see if you really mean what you say. So, let me give you an example. Suppose you and I were thieves. Alright, I'm going to use my best friend, Peter. Suppose Peter and I were thieves. And I gave my life to Christ and I said, Peter... I give my life to Christ and we can't go tea with you anymore. And Peter goes, yeah man, I respect that man, I respect that. No worry about it. But then one day, Peter comes to you, you know, after a time of rest in the Lord. And so Peter comes to you and he uh, comes to me and he says, Sil, listen, my need for God and I move. And you're the only one me can trust to go with me. And I said, no, Peter, remember, you know, I give my life to Christ. I give my life to Christ, I can't go. Fast forward another few months, Peter comes to him and he says, Sil, listen man, I go up and I move, you know, and I only trust you for having my back. And I said, no, Peter, I can't do it because, well, you know, say, me give my life to Christ and I just can't do them things anymore. But Peter will vex, Peter will say, and, and you, you just get, you just switch out what, we're not friends anymore and him do everything to make me feel guilty and I, I hold my ground and I said, no, Peter. I am not going with you. Fast forward a few months now. I am in need. I go to my friend Peter. I said, Peter, listen. I'm in a little financial straits. You, know, you can't help me out with the money. Me pay you back X, Y, Z. And Peter goes, um, I'm not the money in a sale, but I go up and I move probably two nights from now and you can come with me and make a money for yourself. And it's one out of two things going to happen here. I am going to say, oh, I must God bless it. Remember, God does not break his laws to bless anybody. Okay? So, God must do it. So, God must, I must God give me this. I must God put this on my lap. No, the devil can put things in your lap too and tell you that, you know, yeah, man, go ahead because I must God did tell you this. No, beware of deception. So, remember, you know, before you come to Christ, you know, you're in darkness. The devil don't really need to worry about you. Some people like to say, Oh, the devil don't trouble me. He say, I'm not troubling him. Oh, he's troubling you. Don't worry. He's troubling you. It's just that you're in darkness already. No need to stress himself about you. Come have you where he wants you. Right? But, once you accept Jesus Christ, the scripture says, You have come into his marvelous light. So guess what that means? No spotlight. The power you, the devil's going on. Oh, I hold that they want to get away. Oh, me never see that coming. You know, so make me try everything to get her back. So, He's not going to let you go so easily. As long as he has you in darkness, he doesn't need to be concerned. He's coming to test you to see if he finds anything in you. John 14 verse 30. I don't have much time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me. No, some translation says he finds nothing in me. So the children of Israel have crossed over the Red Sea and was greatly delivered by God. As soon as they set off and get into difficulty, the murmuring and complaining began. Again. Because remember, you know, before they crossed the Red Sea, it was like, Well, I'm not brave, never done in Egypt. For kill we off. You have to bring we out here for kill we. All right. Remember, this complaining is against the God who delivered them greatly with plagues, with pestilence, wiping out their enemies. So now they're in the desert for three days without water. And then just when they think they say, Water. They come upon the waters of Mara. Sorry, Mara. Mara means bitter. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you... Like, like even with that situation, I give you with an example of like, suppose me and my best friend were thieves and whatever. When he says, okay, you know, me I go up and I move, you can come with me and whatever. I will look at it as this great deliverance and go, yeah, man, see water here, but <laughs> the water bitter. The water is bitter. 
The word Mara means bitter. The root of this word is found in the word Mar, which means bitter, angry, chafed, discontented, heavy. And it's first mentioned in Numbers 5 in the curse of the bitter water. The bitter water was thought to have caused infertility in women who, if they were guilty of adultery, it would cause this, um, death and rupture of the womb and thighs. What is not mentioned, but research will show, is that it also caused death in the case of the partner of the woman with whom she committed adultery, wherever he was located. So he didn't have to be there when she drank the bitter water. So you <laughs> basically, you know, when you drink the bitter water, guess what? When you drink the bitter water, it don't just affect you. In a spiritual sense, bitterness causes death. And there's a parasitic plant in South America that is called, uh, guess what it's called? It's called Mara. This plant attaches itself to a tree, covers it, grows and covers it and sucks the life out of it, killing it. Bitterness feeds on our soul like that. So before we start to declare how we are glad we are not like the children of Israel, let's think back and be honest with ourselves. How many times have you complained and murmured instead of asking God how to deal with a situation? So I'll give an example that I experienced. I love to have a clean kitchen. If you want to drive me nuts, use something and leave it in the sink for me to wash. I end up saying things like, I'm so sick and tired off. Recently, for about four to five weeks, I was experiencing a pain near my heart. Now, I'm not saying this is how you to have you must approach sickness. Everybody have to have their own revelation. All right? But you see, when I am sick, I don't just jump and go doctor. Me ask God where I cause it. Okay? Firstly, me not come into agreement that I am sick. I don't. Okay? Me start to declare the word over my body. Because, and this is not saying I am ignoring the fact of what is happening. The fact is, yes, I am experiencing pain, I'm experiencing a headache, but the truth says, by his stripes, I was healed. So God saw this coming and him done deal with it already. So I asked God to show me what is causing this. So I'm reading a book of, of a friend of mine that she's about to publish. And it starts to minister to me. I start to say, hold on there. These are words that I'm speaking over myself. So I start to renounce some things that I've been saying over myself, including the sick and tired. So God showed me I was complaining and murmuring more than how I was praising. So I repented and declared over myself, I am not sick and tired. I'm living in divine health. My health prospers as my soul prospers. I'm not tired. I'm vibrant. I'm joyful. I'm content. And I think on these things. The next morning I awoke and there was no pain in my chest. To God be the glory. In Exodus 15, verse 25, Moses cast a tree, a tree into the bitter waters and it became sweet. The people could slake their thirst. The word for tree is eight, meaning gallows, carpenters, and hello. Jesus was a carpenter, I'm just saying, you know. A tree or a plank, etc. The Greek word for cross is histemi, which carries the same connotation. In verse 20, it says, he said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Oh, hallelujah. Feeling bitter? Don't allow yourself to be overcome by it. Don't give in to it. Allow God to reveal himself to you as your Jehovah Rapha, your healer. He exposes what is in your heart, not to condemn you, but for you to choose to be healed and made whole. Jesus died on the cross to set you free from bitterness so that you could forgive, so that you could not speak curses over yourself and others. Surrender to the finished work of the cross and be free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For who the Son has set free is free indeed. Next up, the camp of Elim. See you next week on the Metri.